I know why your brakes are squealing. It's because they're contaminated. Or, or, it's because you didn't get a clean bed in. Okay, you've been using them too unevenly. You've been locking up those rotors too much when they're hot. Luckily, the way you fix one is the way you fix the other. So, let's hop right into it. The first step is gonna be decontaminating your rotors. Alrighty. So you've got your brake rotor off your crusty old wheel and it's time to start decontaminating. I would recommend that you use something other than a basic paper towel because they tend to kind of slough off onto your rotor because they get caught in the sharp edges. If you have something like a microfiber or just any other sort of cloth rag, it would work better. I'm just using this because it's what I have on hand. So let's get the goods. What you're gonna want is some rubbing alcohol or brake cleaner, what have you. There you go. Got the alcohol, alrighty. So you're not gonna wanna just dump it straight on there, that'd be kinda be a waste. Just wet your cloth a little bit. There you go. And really work your, work your way around the braking strip of your rotor. Just really rub it well. You're actually gonna start to see, this one's a little older, it hasn't been used for a while. Um, I've already done this a couple times, but you'll see the residue of the brake pads rub off onto your cloth. Even if your brake pad looks clean, you're gonna see black dust on your cloth. And that's good, that means it's working, that means you're getting all the residue off, you're probably removing any contaminants also. Uh, so that's good, you want to see that. So you're just gonna rub it all the way around, and if you can, wear gloves while doing this, or at the very least, wash your hands with soap and water, and then spray them with alcohol just to get the oils off of your hands. It'll really dry them out. It's terrible for your skin, but it's quicker than putting on gloves sometimes. So that's what I'll do. Now, be careful not to touch the rim strip again, or the rim strip, touch the braking track again, flip it over, get some more alcohol, rinse and repeat. Now, if this doesn't work, and after you bed in your brakes, you notice they're still squeaking, there is one more thing you can do. Sometimes the, uh, residue from the brake pad is really stuck on there and you just can't get it off. So you can actually go around here with some medium to fine grit sandpaper and just do small circles all the way around the brake track as evenly as you can, very lightly. And then again, wipe off with alcohol and that's sort of gonna reset the surface. You'll notice on new brake rotors, you have a totally different surface than what's going on here. It's actually much rougher and it's meant to have that perfect uh, surface to catch the right amount of that brake pad residue so that you have a good bite later on. So you really wanna make sure that you don't go too heavy on the sandpaper if you do it, because that will just make your squealing worse. So I like to see it as a last resort. I wouldn't just hop straight into that. I like to start with rubbing it with alcohol and trying to clean it off before you do anything destructive. But yeah, that's how you would disinfect your brake router. Now we can chuck it back on the wheel and uh, bed them in. Alrighty, so after you've decontaminated your rotor, what you're gonna wanna do is decontaminate your pads. It's pretty simple. All you're gonna need is obviously your pads and then a little piece of sandpaper. Grit doesn't matter too much. Could be anywhere from 100 to 320, anything like that. You just wanna rough up the surface and get down, get the glazing off if they are glazed. You can see these are not quite glazed, but they're not quite fresh either. And we wanna take them back to that fresh state so we get a really clean bed in with those rotors once we do that step. So I'm just gonna spray everything with alcohol real quick. That's gonna be your best bet to really just disinfect everything and make sure um, any oils are taken away with the sanding. So I'm just gonna spray them like so. And the alcohol, the good thing about that is that it just bakes out. So you're not gonna be left with like alcohol residue because it does just disappear. And if you had, if I had a sanding block, I would be using that, but I don't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand it. Um, small circular motions if you haven't uh, sanded surfaces before. That's what's gonna be ideal. Really light sanding. I don't know if you can tell already, but there's sort of a black sludge on there. I'm gonna get a rag and wipe that off. You can probably already tell sanded pad is a lot lighter than the unsanded pad. Um, and you can see all that, all that sludge there. And it's not necessarily that the sludge is the problem, that's just brake pad dust. 
and you know that's a what happens with brake pads but you want to make sure that there's no contaminates on, contaminants on that surface level so you got your alcohol and you're just wiping off anything that comes off and again that's just to give you a really nice bead bead bed in when you go to those rotors to make sure you're not depositing any any contaminants and that you have a nice fresh surface because if your pads are glazed and you go to bed in your rotors you're not going to have a good time take your time with this step you don't want to rush through anything but it's not that hard either and you also don't want to sand too hard that you really lose life on your brakes because that is a bummer which means you're gonna have to buy brake pads sooner these look pretty good now high hopes for these so let's go ahead and bed the bed in those rotors so now we're at the uh, bed in phase what you're going to want to do is I'm on the e-bike here, so I get a little speedometer. I don't know if you can see it, but you want to accelerate up to about a jogging speed, 13, anywhere from about 12 to 15 miles an hour. And then at one, with one brake at a time, you want to slow down to about walking speed without stopping, without locking up your wheels, and then accelerate back up to jogging speed. And then slow back down to walking speed. And then you want to get back up to jogging speed back to walking speed. And you wanna go up and down those two from uh, from jogging speed back to walking speed about 10 times. So that was the fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. It really helps if you have like a hill to do this on. Because uh, yeah, trying to do this on flat ground when I'm doing this on new bikes in our parking lot, it can be quite tiring. Number nine, I think. And then number 10. And then what you're gonna wanna do is get up to a sprinting speed, say about uh, 15 and up, 15 to 20 miles an hour. I'm actually gonna slow down a little bit. And during this whole process, you wanna make sure that your wheel the wheel that you're betting in does not lock up, or either of your wheels for this matter. Whichever one you're betting in. You wanna get up about 20. Slow down to walking speed. Back up to about 20. Down to walking speed. And you're gonna to wanna to do this five times. Number three. four, five. And you'll actually feel the braking power increase. You're gonna feel um, how that, that surface on the rotor forms when you bed those brakes in. It's gonna leave um, some of the material from the surface of the brake pad to the surface of the brake rotor. There's gonna be some transfer there. And that's really what gives your rotors their bite and the, the proper braking surface. So this is a hugely important step that a lot of people skip over. And the reason you don't want to skip it is because when you bed it in like this, and you make sure that you know, you're doing it evenly, consistently, and that you're not locking up any of your wheels, is that you're making sure that you have a nice even layer. Um, a lot of times you'll get honking and squealing if you have an uneven amount of deposition of that pad material onto the rotor and that is a big no-no for uh, nice sounding brakes. Ignore the rotor rub I have, they're just warped as heck because uh, we hit rocks um, and that will bend your rotors. But if you want a video on truing rotors or straightening out your uh, brake calipers, I can make a video on that too. But yeah, that's the, final, that's the final step. You've completed your true, and now you wanna try not to touch that brake for the next 10 minutes. You wanna let things cool down, let that transfer. You wanna make sure everything's settled in, cooled down before you use that brake again. So, not gonna use that brake. I'm gonna head back home and that's it. So now that you've finished bedding in your rotors and you've uh, decontaminated your pads and your rotors and everything should be back up to snuff. If it's still squealing, you can repeat the process and sometimes that'll help. Um, but really, if, it's, if it keeps on squealing like that, uh, you're gonna have to do something a little more serious. There are some 
products out there like Squeal Out, which kind of acts as a rotor polish, which is kind of meant to be that perfect grit. It's a paste that you can sort of grind out the surface of your rotor with, and I've heard good things about that. I've not used it personally, but I've heard good things from friends. Uh, and then new pads, that can always help. If you really decontaminate your rotor and then get new pads just to make sure they're not glazed, uh, that can be hugely beneficial as well. Um, but I, I hope this helps you. It's helped me a few times. So yeah, please uh, you know, leave a like if you feel I've earned it and uh, go out and ride.